The New York Times has published a report on President Trump's taxes. They say the president paid only $750 in 2017 and paid no income taxes in 10 of the 15 years through 2015. Hogan Gidley is with us, Trump 2020 National Press Secretary. This is being called a political bombshell this morning. Your response to the Times article, Hogan. One of the most overused words this entire presidency is the word bombshell. Yep. Ridiculous. What right. year am I in, by the way? We have Nancy Pelosi talking about impeachment. We have Adam Schiff talking about Russia. And what do you know? The New York Times talking about taxes. This was litigated in 2016. The president put out more than 100 pages of documents regarding his taxes. This story is fake. The attorney at Trump Organization said so. And the president said so as well, pointing out he's paid tens of millions of dollars in taxes. The Trump Organization folks weren't allowed to look at these documents, verify these documents. They tried to explain this to the New York Times. It appears as though this is just another hit job in a long line of hit jobs from the New York Times and many others. And it's very curious that when this story dropped, did you notice Joe Biden already had lapel buttons ready to go for his supporters out there talking about the story. So the whole thing is a hoax. It's a scam. We're moving forward with the debate and prepared for okay. a win in November. Oh, going to hold on for a second. Happening now, President Trump speaking on the South Lawn of the White House. He's looking at the 2021 GM Endurance truck. It's an electric truck made in Lordstown. I think we can listen in for a second. Sure. Genius. Great. Came up with the engine. We usually go to the president when he's saying something. Regrettably, this time, he was simply looking at the electric truck from Lordstown, Ohio. So let's go back to Hogan Gidley, still with us this morning. Um, look, we've got a, a debate tomorrow night. No teleprompter, no spin room. Now, does that give an edge to either side, do you think? Well, I think the only edge uh, here uh, as it relates to the politics of this is for Joe Biden for a couple of reasons. One is he's been doing this now for 50 years, 38 debates over his career, 11 in this cycle alone, besting 20 plus candidates on the Democrat side to come out, emerge as the Democrat nominee and a media that regardless of what Joe Biden says will absolutely declare him the winner. But as far as advantages go for the American people, it's this president's policies that have made their lives better. They've been advantaged, regardless of race, religion, color, or creed, by what Donald Trump has done to lower taxes, to get rid of regulations, to make employment numbers soar in this country, more jobs than there were people to fill them, manufacturing plants coming back to this country like we've never seen before. So the advantage, as it relates to results, a four-year career of success goes with Donald Trump, and the 47-year career of failure lies solely with Joe Biden. Um, I, I think the president has to be a little careful. I mean, Joe Biden is, I, I don't know how to put this, he's elderly, he's almost 78 years old. If the president comes on too strong and really kind of beats him up linguistically, I mean, you could get the sympathy going for the elderly Joe Biden. I mean, I think the president has to be kind of careful here. Well, the American people want a leader who can lead, who can take on the tough challenges that we face across this, across this country and across the world. You have to be strong in moments uh, of, of turmoil, whether it's Kim Jong-un, whether it's coming up with a trade deal uh, for, for the United States with Japan after China ducks their, their obligations and then go back to China and make the trade deal for the American people that actually work, renegotiating NAFTA, that takes toughness. But the president understands that the forgotten men and women of this country have been left behind for decades. Joe Biden doesn't get that. So regardless of how strong Joe Biden comes out, regardless of how weak he comes out, the American people have suffered with Joe Biden's policies. But as I said before, the media is going to cover for him regardless of the performance. And as you just said, the sympathy out there, whether that exists or not, whatever lane the media can take Joe Biden into to make it appear as though he won, that's where they'll take it because they have a vested interest in seeing the man, Joe Biden, be president, who's embraced all of their radical policies that would remake this country in the image of socialism. I believe you're in Cleveland right now, actually, getting prepared for this, uh, for this debate. Um, are, you, are you aware that in downtown Cleveland they've already started to board up buildings? I mean, that's a bad omen if ever I saw one. 
It's a really sad thing. And, you know, it's funny about the, the funny thing about peaceful protests, they end peacefully. We just saw a march called the return on the mall this weekend. No one boarded up any buildings. We saw the March for Life. We see it every single year. No one boards up any buildings. These Joe Biden supporters have taken over so many cities, caused so much death, destruction, chaos in our streets. They need to be held account for it. And hopefully tomorrow night on that debate stage, Joe Biden gets pressed about why his supporters are out there because he won't call out Antifa by name. He won't call out BLM by name. He won't call out the abolish or defund the police movement by name either because he knows they're all of his supporters. Got it. Hogan Gidley, I know you're in Cleveland and I'm sure you're going to be there for at least the next 36 hours. We'll talk to you again tomorrow probably. Thanks for joining us, Hogan. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.